Good evening, Internet. My name is Otis and I am going to drag you through hell. Well, less drag and more guide, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Today we'll take a look at a game called Escape from Naraka. Escape from Naraka is an indie title developed by the small Balinese studio Xello Games and published by the German publisher Head Up Games. It's a storylight first-person platformer set in different Hindu hells. Storylight in this case means there is really little to no context for the narrative, which itself only consists of the intro sequence and the two possible ending sequences. Let's take a look at the intro, shall we? Now in the intro we see a man and a woman sitting under a tree as a meteor crashes down on a near mountain. After that we see the two praying, presumably to the gods, as a portal opens and the woman is sucked into it. We then see the man gather his resolve and lunge after her, arriving at a dark temple of some kind. That's all the information we are given really, as we start our very own journey through hell. There is however a bit more context given to us in the form of some clues outside the games. Xello Games were so kind as to publish a small comic expanding on the intro sequence. From the comic we see that the woman seems comparatively virtuous or potentially even pure, while we see the man indulging in vice. Cockfighting is historically seen less negatively in the Indonesian context compared to the West, but it is associated with the vice of gambling and in this case also with animal cruelty. Interestingly though, both characters assume that the meteor is a sign of punishment from the gods towards the man, until the woman is snatched by a scrawny claw. I believe this event does not mark a punishment by the gods for vice, but is rather a kidnapping of a virtuous maiden, which seems even more likely if we take a look at the Steam game description. It reads as follows. Escape from Naraka is a hellish first-person action platformer. Journey to another realm to save your beloved from an evil demon named Ranga, the Layer Queen, and platform your way through a nightmarish temple where each level will challenge you again and again. Knowing who our antagonist is opens a lot more interpretation space about the main narrative. So, who is this Rangda? Rangda is a demon famous in Balinese myths. She was once a powerful witch that held great dark power called Kalanarang. She was feared by all men, so much so in fact, that no man dared to ask for a beautiful daughter's hand in marriage. That made her furious, so she decided to enact revenge upon the kingdoms. She and her followers kidnapped a young maiden and brought her to a dark temple. There, they sacrificed her to bring a great plague upon the world. Seeing how Rangda is responsible for kidnapping a maiden, and sacrificing her in a dark temple, it seems this game is heavily inspired by that specific myth. That is, if it is not actually a reimagination of that myth. However, the myth does not include a hero that saves or damns it in distress, nor is the original dark temple set in hell. But I'd say there are quite a few interesting parallels at least. The other piece of the narrative given to us, the ending sequence, also has some interesting parallels to old myths. In the ending sequence, we see that the woman has turned into a demonous creature. A pair of long tusks and fangs protrude from the sides of her mouth, framing her elongated tongue that stretches below her waist. 
Her eyes are big and bloated and her hands have transformed into claws. On her head she wears a crown atop a wild mane. And that is a common way to depict Rangda in Balinese art. Interestingly, her followers are sometimes depicted identical to her, potentially suggesting that a woman has been corrupted and is now a demon witch herself. Which would make sense in this context, but it would kind of be far-fetched. The man, on the other hand, falls to his knees after failing to save his loved one. He is struck with grief and transforms into a stony demon, like the ones populating the different Narakas we visit. This type of demon is often seen at temples in the form of statues, and I find it interesting that the demons in the game are also made of stone and not made of flesh and blood. The story of Rangda is traditionally told via dance. The performers don masks and costumes which channels the entities in their performance. Those performances are seen as potentially dangerous since the dance characters are believed to be very much physically present during the performance. This importance of mask is also found in the game in form of the mask shards. Each level has one or two shards and if the player collects all shards and crystals in the game, they unlock another ending, which shows the power of masks. If you would like to see that, you might want to pick up the game and give it a go yourself, as for the hells we find them in. First off is Tamisra Naraka. Tamisra Naraka is a dark hell reserved for the greedy. Those that steal money, property or wives land here and are punished by deprival of food and water. That stealing wives is a part of greed is an interesting outlook in my opinion. Regardless, we see the idea of greed represented in the treasures in the beginning of the level and the fact that they do not appear afterwards might be an artistic rendition of deprival. We also find a large statue of Rangda here. Next off we visit Avicii. No, not the interpret. Avicii Naraka is a vast open hell reserved for liars and oath breakers. At its heart lies a vast mountain from which the damned will repeatedly be dropped, shattering their bodies over and over again. While there is no mountain at the heart of the level, it consists of floating platforms over an infinite fall, which I at least fell down more than enough times. It is also here that we meet an unexpected character, at least unexpected if we keep Indian tradition in mind. Apparently some South Asian fans of the game wondered why Ganesha appeared in hell, not only once but multiple times, which prompted this response by the Xello Games team. The interesting part being, in Indonesian versions gods always test humans for some higher purpose. Same with Ganesha that would put the protagonist in hell and test his courage for some reason. That confirms that we in fact see Ganesha in the Avicii Naraka and other hells. Since Ganesha appears multiple times close to another, I assume this is some sort of avatar, not the main form of the deity. But as you might expect, the game does not inform us on the nature of Ganesha's appearance. Also, it kind of suggests that this is not in fact a rescue mission, but rather a well thought out ploy. But again, the game is not very clear here. After our foray into the Avicii Naraka, we enter Rijisha Naraka. This hell has me a bit stumped since I found little to no information on it, which might signify a higher importance in Balinese myth compared to Indian myth. Regardless, I am unfortunately not an expert on Balinese or Indian mythology. What we find in this hell, however, is large skeletal hands and structures as well as many portals. Not finding much information on the heads unfortunately became somewhat of a pattern here. Rijisha, Samhata and Kakola are all mentioned by different manuscripts, but also seemingly not described in any. Yamakarta Naraka, the final stage on the other hand, is not mentioned anywhere. Most notable of those hells, however, is Kakola Naraka, which is set in an icy fortress and split into two stages. In the first stage we enter the fortress and in the second stage we traverse through it. From the little I could gather, Kakola Naraka is the hell reserved for those that remain in hell indefinitely with no chance of rebirth. Such a hell is of course not part of all Hindu cosmologies, so I am not surprised that it is hard to find. Apart from those aspects, all levels brought figurines, statues, reliefs and similar things found in temples. It is possible that the temple we visit is actually continuous over those six hells, but I doubt it. It's just unlikely that a temple would stretch more than one hell. Another really cool thing about the game is its soundtrack. If you are familiar with it, you have undoubtedly already spotted the gamelan. 
A gamelan is a collection of mostly bronze, brass or iron instruments consisting of gongs, metallophones, bamboo flutes and different other percussions. Interesting to note here is that an Indonesian gong is not a nearly flat disc but rather a pot-shaped drum-like instrument. The gamelan is a very typical Indonesian instrument with quite a bit of cultural significance. In this case the gamelan is mixed with synths that are more typical of video game soundtracks, though the unique combination present makes for a beautiful and different soundtrack. That's about all I have for you, but I hope you enjoyed this little foray into a very different and uniquely Indonesian game. See you all later and thanks for watching.